Well, up next, I'm sure you've heard them if you haven't spotted them. Canadian geese are back. They're crossing our highways. Yeah, they're hissing at us sometimes. And they're honking away. They actually can be quite aggressive. Urban wildlife expert Colleen Cassidy St. Clair teaches biology, biological rather sciences at the University of Alberta. She has some advice about how to deal with cranky geese if you come across a hissing goose. I've done this lots when I'm golfing. <laughs> They can make you really nervous. Uh, she also, though, talks about why geese are so attracted to our cities. Geese would be among the species that we call urban exploiters, meaning that they reach really high densities in urban areas, uh, sometimes actually even higher densities than the surrounding area. And it's because they find so many things to eat in cities. They find uh, great places to nest with no predators, and they can produce more geese. So what they really like to eat is is very fresh new grass. It's super high in, in protein. That's not easy to find in the early spring, but um, mowed grass uh, that's treated with fertilizer through part of the year is, is very tasty and very nutritious. So they like that. And if that's in combination with water bodies, like city parks, they like that even better because that's good uh, scape habitat for their young once they hatch. So it's a combination of abundant food and uh, the lack of predators that really attracts them to cities. They're good parents, I guess, is what makes them aggressive. So male geese in particular are defending their their mates. They're quite monogamous. They, they mate for their whole lives unless one member of the pair dies or, or unless they fail to raise young repeatedly. That would be cause for goose divorce as well. Uh, but otherwise, they really stand by their mates, and the males defend uh, the female from from would-be predators or competitors as she's getting ready to choose a nest site where she'll lay her eggs, and then they become even more defensive when the eggs are laid, and even more defensive still when there are little goslings running around, which isn't for a very long time because uh, geese are, are hatched in a state that's known as precocial, just meaning that they are they are ready to walk around uh, soon after they're hatched and they can swim not long after that. So if they can hatch near a water body, they can make their way to that water body and and, uh, protect themselves to some degree from predators. They can get very aggressive, but I think when that happens, those geese generally have been fed by people. Almost all animals uh, become bolder around people when they're fed. They associate people with food and then they start to sort of extort other people for food. Um, That might be what's going on in some of these viral videos. The food that we tend to give geese, though, as humans, isn't good for them. Um, When we feed them breadcrumbs, it causes a condition called angel wing uh, that prevents them from flying and and worsens the resident goose problem. And it also weakens their immune system. It makes them more susceptible to some of the parasites they get, which they can give to us, things like cryptosporidium, giardia, toxoplasmosis, those are some of the microbes that they can pass on to us via their feces. So in general, it's really not a great idea to be attracting geese to our our urban parks and neighbourhoods. The best thing is to make them feel unwelcome. Uh, There's limits to how unwelcome you can make them feel. Geese are protected as migratory waterfowl under the Migratory Birds Convention between the U.S. and Canada and under the Migratory Birds Convention Act in Canada. So you can't take it upon yourself to to harm them in any way. But if you uh, run towards them and shout and wave your arms, uh, if you feel like you're in danger of being attacked, you might carry a, a stick or a hiking pole. Uh, that will make them feel a little less secure and and perhaps decide that that's not a good place for them to nest and maybe they'll move elsewhere and and leave you in peace. Keeping a ring of cattails around those water bodies makes them a little less attractive to geese and reducing the amount of mowed grass in a city also makes an entire city less attractive. And I have to say, if you've uh, been in Manitoba any length of time, you've you've encountered a goose. You've got some kind of a goose story. Uh, Corey's got one. So does my next guest. He's he's here to talk about coffee in a minute, but why don't we bring Corey in first? (laughs) Uh, Last year, I was running a, a trail marathon in Falcon Lake 
Okay. And I was on this single track part. And there's this part uh, just when you're kind of coming around the lake, single track, then there's a bridge. Right at the end of that bridge, you can't go anywhere. There's a There was a goose there. It was like right around this, It was right around this time of year where they're extra <laughs> mean. Exactly. I get there and there's goose. Are like wings out. <laughs> hissing, but I have to, like, that's the only way I can go. But he's blocking this What'd bridge. You do? Uh, so th- I had heard, and I don't know if it's true or not, that when you see a goose, you're supposed to go into I'm a little teapot mode. So I literally, because you, because goose your geese are stupid. So you stop running. So you stop running, and I, I literally, don't think I put stupid. my. I think they're pretty smart. Well, but anyway, go I, ahead. I was, I put out my handle on my yeah. spout because that you pretend that you're a goose, Got and it. They, they're like, oh, you're a goose. <laughs> and and then, what happened? Well, the goose was still kind of aggressive hissing, but he slowly, I was like, goose, like move, don't hurt me. And then the goose slowly moved to the side, and I moved forward as as a teapot. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually I made it through, but it was a good five minute standoff. It took a long time for that goose to warm up to me as of my goose teapot. Uh, they're yeah. stressful when they're hissing at you. Oh, it was scary. Listen, Gavin Friedel is a professor of international development studies at St. Mary's University, and we're going to talk about coffee prices and tariffs. But he's also, uh, pardon me, I have the uh, title wrong. I apologize. Professor of global development studies at St. Mary's. Uh, so we're going to talk about coffee prices in a minute, Gavin. But I know that you uh, spent some time living here in Manitoba as well and have also come across a goose. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I grew up in Winnipeg. Yeah, I lived there till I was in my early 20s. I don't know if I have a specific story, but I certainly remember being maybe 18 and discovering just how uh, aggressive uh, Canada geese could be, which was very different from the imagery you have as a child. I remember one of them attacking me in a park once, and uh, I don't think I responded quite the way that you guys have been describing. Uh, I seem to recall hightailing out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, like, when they get hissing at you, it's like it, it, you freeze. You realize they can do some damage. Uh, let's open the listener line, 788-3205, 788-3205, if you've got a story about about geese. Everyone's got one, we think. Uh, what a lot of us have seen going on are the geese. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. They're... Cobra chickens. <laughs> They're out there about. We had an item about it in the last hour. We asked you to call with goose stories. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, So we got one call from Adam. Uh, I'll sum it up here. Uh, He said, so he was actually cycling in East St. Paul. And he was hit by a goose in the head while he was cycling. What? But what's interesting is actually said, like, he was okay. But he said he actually thought it was kind of, like, funny. Like, if you really think about it, it's kind of wild. And actually made him respect geese more. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Wild. Uh, Also, uh, Shirley called. She actually works at U of M where there's geese everywhere. And she actually says she's used the teapot method before, like I do, where you pretend you're a teapot. And it's worked. It worked. Uh, And uh, she uh, here's what she had to say about geese at, at U of M. I actually love the geese, and in my office, they just echo. We can hear the geese so loud. I always wonder if they're not always yelling at each other, if they're just like, hey, how's it going? It's kind of chilly out. Why does the snow come back? So, but the teapot hat up does work, although... Where there is room, I see students and staff taking the widest berth around the geese. And at the U of M, we actually have signs all over. Um, don't go here. Geese are nesting. Don't go here. Geese are nesting. Sorry, this entrance is closed. Geese are nesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, if they're nesting, like they're coming for you. Oh, yeah, you don't mess with those then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, our first <laughs> guest is going to talk about AI with me in a moment, but you actually want to talk geese? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, we were just chatting before, before she came out. She was waiting on Zoom here, Alex Plant. And she, hey, hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi. 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 How are you? <laughs> good, good. So you have a goose story, right? Uh, yeah. So I, um, well, first of all, I, uh, the previous, uh, person there, like, I just hiss back at the geese. Do you? It's just something I. Does that work? I don't know why I do. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay, I like yeah, that. Yeah, they'll hiss at me. I'll go, shut up. I'm bigger than you. do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we saw a geese at, or a geese, a goose at the, uh, park that we used to live near and it was like kind of late in the season and it had like really, really broken wings. So we were like, oh, we should try to help this goose. It's not going to make it. So we called, um, I think the Humane Society, one of the wildlife people. And, uh, they said, if you can catch it and bring it in, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it. Uh, turns out even with a broken wing, very, very hard to catch a goose. Very hard. Yeah, as soon as as soon as you said you're going to catch an injured goose, uh, my sort of flags went up there. Did you manage to catch it? Say, say, no, no. no. Did, did you get injured? 
No, no, it just ran. It's just very fast on its feet. Shockingly fast. Just got mad and ran off. Goose yeah. story, 788-3205. We'll take them. It seems yeah. that we've all got them, right? Like this is super like geeky, but mm-hmm. I, when I'm driving and then there's a goose that's crossing, like say you're on Keniston, which mm-hmm. was me last week, and then there's a goose and it's moving really slow and then I slow down and then everyone else slows down. Mm-hmm. I kind of like, I like that moment. <laughs> like I feel like I look around and it's like, oh, stopping for the goose to pass yeah. yeah yeah it's a nice like a moment of connection with humans and nature in like a weird way yeah because you're all in cars but it's still kind of cool it's strange <laughs> but but yes anyway goose stories uh whether they're behaving badly or not Seven eight eight three two zero five. you know it's spring when we're asking for wildlife stories yes 